Cool-wee, what's going on YouTube? It's Donnie B all day, and all day, and uh, I am bringing you something very cool uh, via Paul Myers, fellow brother of the Blade. Paul is a guy who I was talking to, uh, I talked to a lot, as a matter of fact, that was my computer, um, I talked to Paul a lot, as a matter of fact, and um, he, we were talking about different things, and he has this knife made by Frank Gonzalez who um, has a website, it's Knives by Hand, knivesbyhand.com, um, where I believe he's a Texas guy. He's right here in America who hand makes his buoys. And you're going to see a lot of, if you go to his website, go to, it says shop, and you're going to see non-kukri, kukris, and different things like that. I, I have his website pulled up on the side of me. Um Frank makes some good stuff. And what I love about Frank is one of the reasons that I go with the Kukri House. Uh, the Kukri House has the D-Bad brand um, knives. He makes them affordable. Frank is one of those guys where other knife makers who make them in the same exact way are going to charge $2,000 for the same piece. Frank doesn't do that. No, 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 no. Frank makes them affordable. So far, I mean, I was looking at the price of this. Obviously, sub 200 and there's, uh, I'm going to look real quick, uh, see if there's anything over 200. Um, I see one it's crazy. It's crazy. That's why it's over two. I see two and it's like a sword. Um, I see another one that's like a sword, but as far as buoys, um, I really don't see anything that is crazy expensive. His prices are really freaking good so frank gonzalez made this one as a prototype the first one went out to mr paul myers who then sent it to me um i expected when he was telling me oh yeah snake skin insert blah 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 i was expecting like the faux snake skin nope this is real deal snake skin right here and it's beautiful the pattern is gorgeous it's obviously a kneeled snake it must be a rattler by the way the pattern looks that's what it looks like to me and um it's uh it's keeled and uh it's really cool man that is some quality snake skin right there genuine authentic his his um what do you call it like the uh the fringe the tassels here this fringe is the leather is so incredibly soft i'm spending time talking about a sheath that i don't usually take time on doing but this is really freaking nice, man. I mean, this is like coming off the arms, 1980s rock and roll. Uh, it's awesome, man. This is this is cool. That's some Grizzly Adams stuff right there. I freaking love it. Every real cowboy movie you've seen from back in the day, you're going to see something with fringe. Um, he even has leather leg strap on the end. It is leather. It is sewn. And it is... Um, uh, riveted. So you do have a dangler with a belt loop. So you can ride high, ride low. The guy gets it done. You can take off this loop in case you want to ride it with the belt and not have this thing flapping over you. It's very thoughtful. It's a very thought out sheath. Very, very thought out sheath. I like it. Um, it's a single strap and let's get to the blade. And I'll tell you, you're going to be pretty happy we're getting to the blade. I got to get that out of the way. The cat is just sniffing that snakeskin like... Wah! So now, normally I use... When I do a test on a knife, it's out-of-the-box knife. Paul, uh, Paul Myers, has been using that cat right there. She's the culprit. Um, he's been using this thing. And you can see in the edge where it's been getting its fair share of abuse. So I'm not going to be able to test it out-of-the-box sharp. But it's it's still got a little it's still got a little something to it, um, so we're gonna we're gonna give it a sling. I think it's fifty one sixty. He uses spring steel, uh, leaf spring steel, and that's usually you're you're looking at either uh, fifty one sixty or fifty two one hundred. So I'm guessing Frank, if you're watching, you can correct me on that one. What this is, um, very very cool. It's got the upswept spine, so he's got a nice peak. It's probably around two and a half inches right there of 
pure blade width, which I love. He's got a choil that's, what's that word we all use when things are usable? Usable! So he's got a usable freaking choil, which means you can put your finger in there no matter what hand size you are. You can choke up, you can get some work done. And the great part about this part right here is that thumb webbing fits right in there. So you have a really good secure grip. He does have a um, a double finger hold. How does that work? Well, it goes right in between that one and that one, and look where it fits, right in between that one and that one. So um, I think he did a really good job there. It is true full tank construction, and the uh, guards look like, let's see, the front guard looks like it's welded on. The back guard, it's either welded or maybe the lighting in here is not too good. I am wearing glasses. Or it is a solid piece. And you can see how that's done. Now, what I really, really enjoy about holding this knife is it reminds me of D-Bad knives. It reminds me of them because of how it's made. Um, it's made in the same fashion as the Kukri House, right? These are hand forged. Hand done. They're right here in Texas. Well, not here in Texas, since I'm not in Texas. Um, right here in Texas and at a very good value. He's looking at a uh, nine and a half inch cutting edge, not blade, but nine and a half cutting edge with a four and a half, uh, four and a half inches of, of, I think it's rosewood maybe. I'm not sure. But um, he's got some wooden handles. And overall length is 15 and three quarters with a 24 ounce weight. How does he keep the weight down, you ask? It's uh, under a quarter inch thick, but it still has enough thickness to make it... That's a knife. Um, really, really cool. He does this scalloping here, this nice design line on both sides, and you can see how really well done it is. It's really thought out, really even. Um, that's going to be... Uh, design factor, right? You're not going to, that's not your, oh, I'm going to wire cut with it. No, no, that's not what it is. It's just for design purposes only. And I have to say it looks good. I do like it. His, uh, his grind lines are all good. His bevels are all good. Everything on this so far is something that I would say, yeah, man, I'd, I'd buy one of those. Um, so what we're going to do is I think that's it. So this is the Diamondback Boy prototype. Um, and there's plenty other stuff to choose from on his website, which looks pretty darn good. So what we're going to do is we are going to take this beast outside and we are going to swing it into some stuff and see how it performs. Let's go. All right, before we head over to the old stump, we're going to come over here because around the hot tub, I got all these vines growing and well, I seem to have a knife in my hand. So let's, uh, let's see what the Frank Gonzalez buoys are truly made of. Are they vines splitting ass kicking? Let's see. Oh yeah, baby. Let's see here. Yeah, baby, let's get some of this thick stuff, the stuff that's really in the way. I'm gonna twist it a little bit so I have multiple layers of this vine. I don't wanna hit down because I do have brick down there, but we're gonna do it anyway. Because if I hit the brick, I'll just redo the edge. All right, let's see. Let's see. Man, I'll have to say, uh, for a knife that Paul has clearly been using, it is it is really holding the edge. It's doing a nice job cutting. And just like that, I got all these vines in my hand that weren't supposed to be where they were. So let's take these. We'll dump these over there. And we're going to come down here where we have some stuff overlapping the driveway. So it's got to go. It's got to go. But this is more like a little tree. So it's going to be harder material. So it's going to take some more swinging. Let's make sure we got you guys in here. So this is the tree. It's obviously, I'm standing in the driveway. This is, this is the edge of the driveway right there. It's the edge of the driveway. So you see how far this thing's coming out? Well, that's not acceptable. Woo, did you hear that ting? Oh, you can see what this is. It's vines wrapped in a little tree. Right, so you could see exactly where where that's going. Holy Moses, there is so much entanglement here. Let's see, let's see what we can do. Oh my God, look at this, look at this. That's not so bad. Paul said to me right away, said, oh, you, you might have to put an edge on it because I've been using it. 
hell, Paul. That thing's used, I can tell. And it still has an edge on it. And he hasn't done anything. He hasn't done anything to the edge. So, Mr. Gonzalez is so far, is one up with me. He's he's doing pretty good right there. He's doing pretty darn good. Let's see, we got this guy hanging since I'm walking around seeing them all. Woo! That's a free dangling vine, right? If you guys know vines, you know how tough they are. This is dangling, it's not attached to anything, which means they're, if you hit it with a dull blade, it's just gonna push. So like if I use the swedge, which isn't sharpened, it's not cutting anything. But just a little flick of that, there goes those vines. There's another one and it is gone. A little pricker bush and it is gone. So um, as far as used sharp, this thing's still pretty sharp. Um, let's go let's go test it against some bushcrafty skills and uh, and see really what it's gonna cut for you as you've been using it without sharpening it. If you were to say own one and you were gonna be using it as your camp knife. Let's uh let's find out. You hear that thud? You hear that thud? So first thing I want to do is I want to test exactly how sharp it is or isn't. We're going to do the half inch nylon rope. We're going to try a push cut. <laughs> well, Frank Gonzalez, that's a pass. Um, that actually breezed right through it. I mean, like breezed right through it. So let's do some four foot drops and we'll see how it balances. I have no doubt that it's going to do is just like that. We want to see how that bite's going to be from just a fall. That lets you know if you should avoid dropping it on your foot. Now let's do a couple hard downward throws. We'll test the bite again, and we will see if anything rattles or moves in here. Oh, did you hear that thud? That's got some pretty good bite. Ooh, man. Man. Woo-wee, so far. So golden delicious. Let's, uh... Let's see, let's see what this edge is made of here. I'm gonna choke up, I'm gonna use that choil, and we are going to do some pushes. Oh, look, can you hear that wood splitting? Look at that. Well, that's working. Let's do some pulls. Now I'm gonna give it a side grip, and we are going to, oh, look at that curl that it was making before I lost it because this edge is actually a lot better than Paul made it out to be. Oh yeah, it's used, he says. Oh, you're gonna need to sharpen it, he says. Oh yeah, it's dull, he says. <laughs> I'll take that kind of dull any day. All right. Let's do some some pulls right here. Oh, 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 e, oh, 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 e, oh, oh, oh. Man, I'm getting a bunch of these that you guys aren't seeing. <laughs> Look at how fine that is. Little sweet curlies. These things will burn, burn, burn in a ring of fire. All right, so let's uh, let's make us some kind of pointed stick here. Tent spikes, pit spikes, arrows, spears, it doesn't matter. Anything you need that's pointy for either defense, offense, or just make a fence. Um, and I, I'm pretty offensive all the time, so I understand that. So, uh, man, man, you guys need to get to this website and just check this guy out. Knives by hand. Look at how much material I am taking off per stroke here. Knives by hand by Frank Gonzalez. Here's a Frank Gonzalez. Boom. Look at this. Look at this, look at how it is. Look at how far we're getting it in there. Oh, I was pointing at it, I almost got Frank Gonzalez. Almost had the award-winning wrist taker offer. All right, so let's see if we can split this thin guy. Of course we can. That thing, it split here and then just disappeared. Let's see if we can do it again. Of course we can, this one I found, it was right here. Let's see if we can do it again, it's really thin now. Of course we can, man. They are all just flying off of there. Let's see if we can do it again. I'm only at about this this much. Oh, I got the backside. Oh, I got the backside again. And oh, that one actually shaved down. So now you guys can't really tell what I'm trying to hit here. This is how thick of an area I'm trying to split, right? It's gonna be hard. All right, let's see if we can get it. 
and 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 I'm literally shaving the backside. I'm watching pieces fly off. Oh, there we go. There we go. So that's about that's about the width of the blade, and I can garnish. Oh, there it goes. So look at what I was left with. That's how far I got down. That's left less than the width of the blade, but the balance on this thing is so nice that I'm able to control my shot through the swing. Um, that's pretty impressive. That's pretty impressive. Let's see if it continues to impress. Let's do a couple hard downward stabs because we like to test the tip. Butcha! And that dig in. Look at look at how mirrored mirrored it is. I'm looking at the wood from there. It's insane. But uh, ooh, that was pretty good. That was pretty good bite right there. Let's uh, let's baton, baton. You know that's how I taught myself French. I took the word baton, which is which is stick, right? And I and I said I took phrases like questions like "Où est mon baton? Quel mon baton? What is my stick? Who is my stick? Um, quel baton est-il? What stick is it?" Um, and I just learned a bunch of stuff around the word stick. Je te dis français avec le libre, mais maison avec moi. Um, I taught myself French with a little bathroom reader book at my house just by myself. Uh, je ne peux pas français ah, bien, mais je peux la um, And, and uh, I was trying to teach myself a little language like that. And uh, I mean, it worked a little. It worked a little. Anybody who speaks French is going to know just what I said. And then they're going to say, you said it all wrong. But that's okay. That's okay. Whew. Man. Looks like a convex edge right there. And it is working. It is working. No chipping, no folding, no denser things or silly things. Um, Frank Gonzalez has made himself a knife. Let's see. Let's see. Well, he made Paul a knife. He probably made himself a few knives too, though, I bet. One shot. One shot. Holy moly. All right, so let's do it this way here. Let's do it this way. I don't even, I was gonna baton it, but I don't even need to. I don't even need to. Look at this split. Why? Because Frank Gonzalez said so. Um, I have to say that I had a feeling that it was gonna be decent. I had a feeling that I was gonna like it just through pictures. I was like, all right, it looks pretty good. All right, Paul, I see what you got going there. Hey, it looks all right. You know, I'll test it. I'll, I'll see what it's all about. I like it. I like it. I like it, man. Spring steel, you know, leaf spring steel. Um, and you can see that, that little bounce. Um, it's, it's just made right. It's great size, great weight, great balance. Let's see. Um, let's see if it's a great chopper. We shall see. It looks like we're getting rain, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Let's test this so much. Let's test it. Okay. Come on, man. Come on, man. Oh, my goodness. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Now, the last knife I swung out here was the D-Bad Gator Tail. So, the only thing I can compare it to fresh in my head is the D-Bad Gator Tail. And while the D-Bad Gator Tail is a quarter inch thick, and it was just, I mean, breezing through stuff, I have to say, this thing's keeping up, man. This thing is keeping up. Let's come over here and we'll do the plastic netting test and we'll see if it can do what many can't. It's just a push and rip. Here we go. <laughs> this dull is blade. This, this dull is blade. This blade is dull. This blade needs sharpening. This blade, whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> I'm gonna put a little honing on it, believe me. Um, I think I'm sending this to the shredder, as a matter of fact. 
Um, I'm gonna put a little honing on it, but as far as the edge is concerned, Frank did such a good job. Doesn't need much, doesn't need much at all. Let's see. Man, 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 just nice. So, guys, the website is Knives by Hand. The creator is Frank Gonzalez. And I'll tell you what, Mr. Gonzalez, if uh, I'm not sure if you've been paying attention with uh, what I have going on, but uh, one of the top selling knives in all of Nepal is the D-Bad Preacher. It's one of my designs, it's a great knife. I have some designs that are on standby that are waiting that people have been dying to get and they would sell like crazy. So this is a direct reach out to you, Mr. Gonzalez. Um, and I can tell you that if you wanted to put a little uh, questionnaire, hey, would anybody like to see uh, the D-Bad Muso Bui done by Frank Gonzalez? Who knows, maybe we could do a little collab. Um, I don't expect money, that's not how I roll. Um, so I can get with you on that. Uh, if, if you want, comment on here, or I, I'm gonna actually probably comment to you on your website. So I will talk to you because who knows, you might be able to make a bunch of scratch selling a really quality knife that the design is amazing and I already know what the quality will be. I know that if I designed it and you made it, well, I already designed it and I already have feedback from this design, but I know that if you made it, you would be able to knock it out of the park. I, I mean, after playing with this, I have no questions. So guys, if you're saying to yourselves, well, can he recommend a Frank Gonzalez knives by hand knife? <sighs> Strong like dong, y'all be, be all day. So, um, so yeah, I absolutely, I absolutely recommend this guy. I, I, I recommend that you go to his website, you give him a look. His kukris are pretty nasty looking too. Um, this guy's worth checking out. This guy is worth checking out. I am digging it, Mr. Gonzalez. I am now a fan. Uh, Mr. Paul Myers, who I sent an SE Avispa to that he gets to keep. Um, I hope you're loving the blade. Uh, and I am thanking you for sending this one because this was fun, man. This was you. This is this is what he asked me. He said, you want to have some fun? And I was like, well, I always want to have some fun. So uh, he sent me fun. Um, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. I like it. I am Donnie B all day until next knife.